Okay, I think we're getting underway, everybody, with our meeting tonight. Uh, what are we at? We're at September 15, 2020. Deputy Mayor Hennig will be here tonight. Uh, we talked to the powers that be, and as long as we social distance, we didn't have to wear masks, so that's what we're doing. So we'll get underway. So everybody's had a chance to approve, uh, to uh, review the agenda, and if they're comfortable with it, can I get a motion to approve it? by Councilor Pueblo, seconded by Councilor Constantine. Be it resolved that the Council of Town Nipo approved the regular meeting agenda for September 15, 2020. All in favor? Carried. And in the last minutes meetings, if there was no errors or omissions, and everybody's comfortable with that, we'll move forward with the motion on that. Moved <coughs> by Councilor Gerard, seconded by Councilor Dole. Be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Nipah approve the minutes of the regular meeting held September 1st, 2020 as circulated. All in favor? Carry. I think I need to wait a few minutes. So just... Well, you could go into further action, Jim, if you like. Okay, we've got a couple of public hearings to go forward on, but we're going to need to wait about five minutes here, so maybe we'll just stay with our agenda for a minute. So does anybody have any council reports that they would like to bring forward? Council Perry. Okay. Um, so uh, what's the big idea of what will be happening this year um, for COVID reasons? Uh, I'm sure we'll get running again next year. Um, the uh, beautiful plans communicate clinic lottery is running again. And if you come to the town office, uh, there are forms to fill out so that you can fill the forms out and um, write your check or put your credit card number and the tickets will get to you. There are tickets that are $100 each with 20-20 ticket, or 50-50 tickets that are $20 each, or you can buy a pack of three for uh, $250 for your tickets. And you can buy a pack of five 50-50s for fifty dollars. So, a few good deals, and uh, uh, I guess you can get a hold of myself, Mary Ellen Clark, Robert Scott, Arnie Susky, Mary Ellen Clark, John Nelson. Um, district, which is what we are a part of, we are currently just with three active, and it's a good indication that the the caution and care that people are, are uh, using is paying off. Okay, thank you, Mary. I know Marilyn was really disappointed that she couldn't do a big idea this time. I've talked to her a couple of times, and I know that she was torn, and she kept hoping and waiting, but she had to make a decision, and the decision was because of our social distancing and all the other rules that came along with it, that it's just something we had to postpone. But you're right, I'm sure it'll be back bigger and better the next year, so. Uh, any other questions or comments on what Murray talked about? That's it. Sorry, this Jeremy, I'm ready for a close-up of this, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Happy? Yep. Okay, anybody else got a council report? Hey, council report. I'm pleased to submit another storefront improvement incentive application for resolution tonight. Promo Time is looking to update their entrance with new signage, lighting, and exterior details. The cost of the program is $2,300. In 2020, the total funds committed to the program is $23,225, leveraging over $110,000 in improvements. There will also be two jump clinics at the trail park this Saturday at 10 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Cost is $50 for a three-hour training. Space is limited. Please call Marilyn at 476-7607 for registration information. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, any comments? Okay, anybody else with any council reports? Council Gerard. 
Uh, what I've got here is a report, uh, just uh, kind of a follow-up to the summary of the mask project that just occurred within the community. Okay. Um, so that obviously just occurred, um, and that they were distributed on September the 3rd. Um, those packages were assembled uh, by Touchwood in Touchwood Park and supported by individual staff. Uh, placed pick stickers on each bag and stuffed them each with a box of 50 disposable face masks and six information inserts. It was also a great time for the community to get out a lot of information. Yeah. Uh, some things like our COVID QA, uh, the mental health uh, numbers, emergency notification uh, system info and sign up form. That's probably the kicker of the one I would like to point out uh, that did go out in that. Uh, through the past number of years, the town has been working with Code Red and we are working to, towards a new uh, emergency notification system. So we are going to require residents to sign up for this new program. Now, the success of the program and how well it reaches the community is 100% based on the community members themselves to ensure that they do register for this. We can't get that information out fast enough. Um, I mean, all too often we think there's other tools like social media and whatnot, but that leaves glaring holes in how that reaches our community. Um, there's so many people that don't use that as a form of communication, and sometimes we need to get that information out to residents in an emergency, and it has to happen right away. So we ask that you follow through on that, and we'll be giving out lots of reminders to ensure that you do get signed up for this. Um, as well, there was also a postcard there from High Life, the uh, town website, and then a small reminder of our project uh, sponsors. The, the whole time frame of the project was actually amazing. It only took about a week, really, from start to finish, from uh, I guess the genesis of the idea to, uh, to face mask to deliver to every doorstep in Nipawa. Um So it was on Thursday, September 3rd, they were delivered. Uh, Touchwood, Touchwood Park delivered to all areas south of Highway 16, Broadway Avenue and South Division residents, the north end of the town, uh, west of town, Trailer Park, West Creek, all residents along the highway. 16 and then the Hillcrest development. Uh, our town summer students deliver to all areas west of Mountain Avenue, all areas east of Mountain Avenue, and all miscellaneous uh, residences that are the outliers. And then of course our very own Jamie and Jody deliver to all apartment buildings in town, all residences along Mountain Avenue, homes, apartments, and club businesses. Um, all said being told that it took just over eight hours to get the community covered, which is uh, speaks well to our community being able to be safe and responsible um, as we're going through I, this, uh, I guess, stricter time right now in our, our COVID protocols in, in Prairie Mountain. So the idea of going out in a mask, it's quite easy to do now because we know every home has had a box open. So let's all do our part and participate with that. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's about it. So. Okay, so quick question: If you if you already are signed up for Code Red, do you automatically go over to that? No, sorry. We're asking everybody to sorry, everybody sign up. We're going to try to import, but sorry, depending yeah. how they originally signed up for Code Red, they may not get over. Okay, so, so that's if we can do And going back to the eight hours there, I went Colleen and Jody floated that idea. They could do it one day. I said, <laughs> good luck. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's good. If you haven't learned anything yet, uh, you're going to catch it. Daryl and Lily Camp today. I was just going to ask, yeah. like for the code red reg registration, did you have some of the people, like, can you let them know right now where they go to do this? On our website, if they go to nipo.ca, there's a icon, uh, emergency communication, just click that. It'll take two seconds to sign up. Okay. In that package Gerald was yeah. referring to, with yeah. the half of page thing, we've actually had a lot of them uh, starting to trickle back into the office. Mm -hmm. It's been great. The response has been great. It's okay. been very promising, and I, the, the, I know we'll be communicating that at length and repeatedly to try to get those numbers up. I mean, it would really be nice to see that at least one, one phone in every household was contacted that number. That way, 
you know, whether it be a natural disaster, whether it be, you know, a, you know, a, 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 an industrial accident, something, right, you know, that we can get that information out in a hurry. So I just wanted to add, though, just, as COVID was very successful for us for, for the months we actually had to use it so far, uh, the difference being it is a U.S. company. Uh, we're changing to a service where we already have the elements that's been used for our council meetings and whatnot, so we're just going to uh, take on that extra component through the OMED system, and we'll have better control over it. It's a Canadian company, actually, uh, we can work with people in Manitoba, and we'll have better control over our data, easier access to changing addresses and clients and and it'll be a local number that the emergency call will come. From. Yeah, so so we don't want to suggest by any means cold brick was not effective for it. Well, it was. Good. It was very good. We just see the advantages of moving to a system that is a little more like cold to the to get. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else on that part? Anybody else got any council reports? Okay. Good. We will move back into our public hearing. So Yes, I will need a motion to move forward into the first public hearing. A call to order, moved by Council Parrott. Seconded by Council Jarrett. Be it resolved, the Council of Town of do now open this public hearing to hear representation to variation application B02 2020 of Sheba Maharaj. Uh, Jeff, you're going to talk to us about this from your building inspector. Yeah, so this is application B02 2020 N. Owner and applicant is Shiva Maharaj. The proposal is a, is a variation buried to allow the height of a fence in the rear yard to be increased from 6 feet to 8 feet within the CH commercial highway zone. It's affecting uh, lot 2, plan 5695, specifically being 137 Main Street West. And reason support, uh, the owner wishes to store tow recovery and impound vehicles in a compound which requires an eight foot high fence. So our, our zoning by allows maximum height of fence to be six feet. So the request is to increase that height. Um, I have provided a couple pictures and just a brief overlay of it. The, the fence or the compound will be consisting right directly to the rear of the existing building um, as, as well within any setbacks. Part of it will be newly constructed and part of it will modify it to, to increase to the size that, that was provided in the map for you, so. Okay, and you had no, uh, you said you had no... I had a couple of inquiries, uh, just just seeking of greater information of it, and I have no, no concerns I had for or against it, so. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Councilor Perry? So, two questions. Is it a zone, is it permissible for them to store vehicles in that area uh, in our bylaws? Yes, it would be uh, incidental to the use as a as existing uh, vehicle okay. dealership. So. Um, so this isn't going to end up being a long-term park supply parking type place. It's just a compound for impounded vehicles, which would have a turnaround time of maybe 30 days, as opposed to sitting there for years. Uh, to my knowledge, correct. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how long they are to be there, but the, the storage of, um, like, as a wrecking establishment is, is a different. Yeah, I, it's a different entity versus just the yeah, storage. Right, so, so that, that would be a concern of mine that it doesn't become a storage area for, you know, long term storage for vehicles and then they end up being parked out or, or whatever. Like, you know, being inside the town boundaries, that would be an issue. Are they enlarging the actual footprint of the fence and area? Uh, very minor. Oh, it's very very minor. minor. Okay. Actually, uh, I think the applicant is, is here. If, yeah, she's here. Did you want to come up and speak to that? Maybe have a little more further information for that. I don't have. Thank you. Well, hi, maybe just tell us who you are. Okay, you Chief on Ranch. And um, we have a wrecking establishment in Wellwood. So we wouldn't really have wrecked vehicles there. The turnaround time though is not 30 days. Um, depending on how many DUIs you get, it could be up to 90 days. But so, not a year. 
not a year, no. And we probably only going to have 30 vehicles there, so it's not laid out to have any number of vehicles. Like if we have 30 and we get one more, then we have no place to put it. So 130 after, you know. So it, there wouldn't be vehicles there for years and years and years or a year even. The plan is DWIs. They normally, well, sometimes you tell people they have to get it out in 30 days, but depending on where their pay period go, it might be 35 days, the same thing if you get, I think your second DUI is 60 days, and your third DUI is 90 days. So it all depends, 90-ish days, can, you know. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, guys? Do you own the property adjacent next door? No. Okay. We have Neil. In which direction? Uh, either side. No. Okay. Um, one side is Neil with Nipawataya, and the back and the side is the same neighbor, but it's a commercial property go around, so I don't really know the name. Both both the neighbors where the individuals had contacted me were the ones who were questioning. And uh, well, I provided the information here and they, they saw no concerns with the proposals. Yes, so you received no concerns. No, no, no objection. No, 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 no objections. No objections. Yeah, no objections. Correct. The 80 foot fence is a requirement though of that. It is a requirement, okay. For the RCMP. Okay. Yes. No. Okay. Because Depending on who got the DUI, they would want to jump the fence and jump and start the Makes sense. And <laughs> in construction hasn't started on this yet. No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else? Any questions or concerns or comments? Is it going to be a wood fence or a chain link? Did you say? wood to the back and chain link to the front. There is a six foot fence there right now and it's in panels. So what we plan on doing is raising the panel two feet and wood on the bottom to make up the eight feet. So it'd be the wooden fence on the bottom and the panel just lifted. And there's one place that there's no fence right now but the fence kind of go like this, like this, like this, and down. And we just want to square it off. Okay. So. okay, perfect, thank you. Anything else? Okay, I guess we'll move forward with closing the public hearing then. Move by. Second by. Be resolved the Council of Town Nipo to now adjourn this public hearing at 7 16 p.m. All in favor? Okay. Okay. We're going to move into the second public hearing. So, again, I will need a motion to move forward on that. Moved by Council of Seconded Second by Council of Town. Be it resolved that the Council of Town Nipah do now open this public hearing to hear representation variation application B-03-2020 of, of Jeff Bay on behalf of Charlie Galecko. All in favor? Carried. Okay, Jeff, you're up. This is application B-03-2020-N. Owner is Charlie Galecko, applicant Jeff Bay. The proposal is a variation varied to allow the height of a fence and then for the north side yard separating 415 Fifth Avenue and 409 Fifth Avenue to be increased from 6 feet to 8 feet within the RS residential single zone. The area affecting is lots 25 and 26, block 8, plan 222, being 415 Fifth Avenue. And the reason support is to make the newly constructed fence comply and to provide adequate privacy between the owners. Uh, so, yeah, again, this is another fence site. Um, maximum height is six feet. Uh, it's been added or it's been redone to 
To increase it to eight feet, uh, this fence is only on the, uh, the boundary line between the two properties. It is, it is not completely around the yard. Um, and, uh, uh, applicants here, if you, if you wish, to yeah. yeah. provide some more information. But. Hi, I'm uh, Jeff Bay. We're on uh, 409 Fifth. So the fence is on uh, 415, right? Yes. Yeah. So Charlie is um, my wife's uncle, Uncle Charlie. So he had an old fence back there, and it was uh, rotting, and he was gonna cut it down and make a little short red fence. So <laughs> my wife and I we're um, on our house on the south side of our house we have a door that comes off and a small deck at this time which is two feet off the ground and me being a big guy <laughs> that's kind of I got a picture you want to pass a picture around sure okay so this is a fence in question here and I'm standing on the deck and we plan on bringing the deck out to the edge of the building so <laughs> If it was only six feet, I'd be like looking over at Uncle Charlie. You know? Okay. And um, I just said to my wife, you know, let's help Uncle Charlie out. Let's build a fence for him. Um, he'll get a nice fence. He's happy. He can afford it. And um, well, we gain a little bit of extra property because otherwise, if we built the fence on our side, then we're going to lose five feet. Correct. So and then we're going to have this big open space with is totally useless. Okay. So I said, well, let's help Uncle Charlie and he'll be happy and we'll be happy. So that's kind of how it went. And he was on holiday, so he was doing it like tomorrow. So okay. we just said, okay, we'll go buy the lumber. And um, I really didn't think any problem would be with it because it's not affecting anybody, right? right? And on the other side of our property, we got an eight foot hedge so, from the other neighbor. So it just kind of got built, and we didn't ever think there would be a complaint. So, but okay. obviously somebody phoned. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. But it, but in that actual situation, I mean, Uncle Charlie's not complaining. <laughs> no, he <laughs> wasn't complaining. <laughs> so I'm going to go there. I, I've received no no concerns from the uh, from the circulation, no communication at all. So okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I know Councillor Pablo and I are going to drive by tonight to look at it, and yeah, I mean, it looks fine to me. So. Yeah, I think, I think I made it specific to that one boundary just so that for future reference, uh, you know, property owners change hands or anything that it doesn't. It, th this would be specific to that boundary, not the entire yard. Um, yeah. yeah, we're not going right. to yeah. take it anymore, so. Yeah. Right. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay. Well, Close this public hearing, move by. Be resolved to Council Town Epo. I do now adjourn this public hearing at 7 20 p.m. All in favor? Okay, we will go back to our regular meeting. Um, correspondence. So, oh, no, we're into department reports. Neat. We you just send us sort of a paper saying this yeah. through here? Yeah, I'll let you know. All right, okay, thanks. Have a good night, guys. No, thank you. Yeah, okay, guys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, manager of operations, me. All right, uh, work is ongoing on CN site. Staff have started the water and sewer on the uh, residential portion. Last week, Smith uh, completed the drill shop to tie into the manhole on uh, 5th and Bryden, uh, so that was the main starting point for us to start the sanitary sewer on the CN site. So staff will be ongoing there uh, for the next couple weeks. Um, with that, we've also lost all of our service rooms. Well, I'll say there's, there's a couple stragglers, but I expected more to be hanging out with COVID and the way university has kind of changed their format. Regrettably, we did like, lose most of them, so we do have posting out for more skilled or seasonal labor. Short window, quite four to six weeks. So if anyone's out there looking, we are hiring uh, probably three, four applicants. We'll see how that works out. Just flow in with all the departments. While you're in that area, did you, did you talk about the streets? How that's going to like what's going to what's going to happen there? Like 
what's going to stay open, what's going to close, what's going to uh, With the streets right now, uh, Brian is back open. We had to close that when we did the drill shot. Um, right now, we can kind of see the new Mill Street that's kind of got a weird bend in it now. Maybe it's confusing everybody. But uh, once we complete Howden Avenue, which is the north-south one, in front of the new apartment building. Yeah. So once we have that one completed, we'll likely flick the switch and close off Mill Street, Pool Street, whatever you kind of know it by. And then it'll do a curve in front of the fire hall and tie into the new road. And that's the one that's going to be have Gill on the other side. It will, yes, that's correct. Gill Street will be on the other side of that, and that's where it'll come up. Yeah, so we'll put some barriers up and we'll get people adjusted to this, and we'll probably rip up some of the old portions to just remove some of the confusion. Um, once the sign is up, everything else will make a little bit more sense, but uh, we'll just ask some residents to bear with us plus we flip the switch there, so to speak. So that'll be happening in the upcoming weeks. Uh, we said how it's progressing. The nice stone house is already completed. Um, the new work, uh, Mill Street is uh, completely, we'll probably address that a little bit more as traffic runs on it. We'll just have to be cautious with the, the infrastructure because there's manual frames and storm sewer frames, stuff like that, that is sitting slightly higher right now because, because we don't have pavement, obviously. So those will be planned to be paved next year. And then as you slide to the other side, the decision has been made not to close Crocus Street right away. No, we'll leave it in the interim of doing all the residential construction so that we can still move stuff around safely. Um, and then once people adjust to the new street format, and we'll likely then have to close Crocus. But we'll see how things progress this year. Check. We move along with it. Crocus will be closed at some point. So, okay. Check. And that's a Department of Highways decision, right? Yes, that is part of our subdivision requirement. So we will also dig up the Pool Street intersection on Highway 5 because we'll be using a new intersection, so we'll have to remove that as part of our condition as well. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're still seeing inventory being delivered. There's still parts coming in for all the projects. Those are ongoing. Uh, we'll continue to like, work on that. Uh, cemetery saw some light work happen there. We did uh, the first section at the north end. Um, and again, once we have more seasonal staff back on our team here, we'll start working on that project again with some site leveling and site beautification. Um, speaking of the beautification portion, we do have uh, tree delivery scheduled for tomorrow. That'll be our third delivery of trees, actually. We've already had two smaller deliveries, and uh, we'll have a delivery coming from Jeffrey's Nursery, so that'll be uh, cemetery, residential boulevards, parks for placement, um, a few odd ones for the bike park, that some smaller stuff, but uh, a good portion of this will be for actually town boulevards. That was a few of the phone calls we received was, uh, why did you cut my tree down on my boulevard? Um, DE, the, so the Dutch Elm program, was very tardy this year in marking our diseased trees. Okay. And mm -hmm. we literally cut the trees with the paint still with them. So we were on their tails the whole way, cutting trees down before residents even knew they had a diseased tree in their front lawn and it was removed immediately. Okay. So we will be, uh, as time allows, cleaning up the stub grinding we have, so there's still piles of sawdust and some holes, so staff will attend to that. Any idea how many trees you cut down? I don't even have the final list oh, okay. okay. at all. Like they, we, <laughs> we're literally cutting out the paint was wet on the tree. Okay, okay. I think the second they came from there okay. being felled. Um, but likewise, that, like, we will be uh, aggressively planning on boulevards this year. Uh, we have several gaps in our boulevards now, and we definitely want to remedy that. So. We'll be working on that. Uh, Lagoon. I have left your length report, so bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Lagoon. Um, like I said, I mentioned that last week that, or last meeting, we uh, were waiting testing. So the east cell has passed its test results. Uh, the west cell, we're still waiting on the, the Proctor test for probability on that. Uh, hopefully, those will be another week or two, because there's only so many test spots in the lab. We have to unfortunately wait. So in the interim, um, contractors are working on the rip rep portion, so work is ongoing at the Lagoon cells. We are also going to start filling the east cell um, so we can hydraulically load it so that that is the next portion ready for the aeration tubes to be going in there. So work is still ongoing, it's still moving ahead, and it's been a busy zone. So again, 
For those that are going out to the bike park, watch out. We do have trucks running quite a few uh, sand loads of rock out there right now. I think some of you may have noticed a big giant pile of rock that's kind of on the intersection there. So that's all the riprap material for water control erosion on the inside, on the interior of the cells. Uh, flood restoration is ongoing. So we've uh, been working around town, some of the zones that we had some, some damage uh, with a temporary berm, or permanent berm, were built. We uh, again leveled those off and there was some sediment and we've topsoiled those, sculpted them. We'll get those hydro seeded in the coming weeks. We'll do a, a dormant fall sow on that so that uh, we'll bring for some spring growth there. And we'll continue with that. So I think they're completed the south end of town. We'll be working on and around soccer fields on that or on Mill Street uh, this coming week here. Um, so our staff, that's done. We did uh, one centimeter of dust suppressant. So with the new work done on Park Lake Road, with all the extra gravel there and semi-traffic, we kind of punched that out and made it a little dusty. So we sprayed that the other day. We also sprayed the railway street because of all the sand going down there and bike park traffic just to make sure the residents aren't getting some of the noxious dust there. We also have uh, two tender or quote requests out right now. One for riprap around our temporary culvert crossing on Park Lake Road and one for winter sand, so uh, we'll be waiting at the end of this week and then I'll terminate for the riprap and then sand, I'm not going to give a little bit of time on that for submissions yet. So then we'll have some results for next meeting, we'll be announcing that as well. Okay. And then uh, bike park, uh, I had the pleasure of going out on Sunday uh, with Alex Mann, who was the, the, with our trail design crew, and we put a posting out and we had a huge overwhelming group from the Pinoy group come out to assist us with some trail maintenance. So Alex performed a little clinic for us and showed us how to properly maintain our trails. So we uh, spent a couple hours maintaining and building and fixing any little bottles, mud holes, stuff like that that had formed. Um, so a big thank you to the Pinoy group. They uh, definitely came out and they're very eager to volunteer for some other stuff. So we include it to them. So that's everything I've got. If there's any questions. I always have to ask, how's my asphalt recycling machine doing that we have ordered and was well, it, broken and now it's coming back? It came <laughs> damaged regrettably. Um, I do have the parts now that finally came in, so I'll <laughs> check with staff to see how soon we can get that operational. Okay. I am very excited to see that work with myself because I have hit a number of potholes and I'm checking streets and it aggravated me just as much as you. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I got my little list that they might go work on. Yeah, and we did discuss it. You think it's still appropriate this time of the year to still be able to do it, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a thermal infrared year, so yes. it essentially heats the whole zone. Yeah. So as long as we can dry it out and suck out the water and either torch it and make it evaporate, we should get some decent bonding. That's not bad. It's going to crack out in the spring again. And... If it does, we just reheat it and yeah. melt it again and okay. patch it again. So that's the benefit of this program is that uh, Okay, I'm hopeful. It's rejuvenating the actual so yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful too. So I'm also very excited to try it out. Anybody else? Do we have any other existing street projects that are ongoing besides some potable repair that... Uh... Um, I was supposed to have to crack them done. I have to follow that contract to see if they're still on their way, what happened with them, but they were scheduled, so that's the only big outstanding one right now. Uh, micro seal was kind of put on hold just because we took that money to help assist with flood yeah. mitigation efforts because we still don't know. They've announced money, but that doesn't mean it's happening this year. So if we still have to carry that expense, it can be carried into 2021, 2022. It doesn't mean we get a check for more on that. So I have to apologize, and you can scold me for that one. That I held back on that one because it's a big ticket item to cover a lot of the flood expense we had. No, I just want to make sure that that's, that's yeah. communicated to the public that it's not a thing where uh, council isn't supportive of street repair. It's that those dollars were doubled up as a result of the community, the Canada Day event. Yeah, yeah. we need to uh, do some smaller street repairs. Um, I'm waiting on a few quotes still for some other ones, but if, if the weather holds and we have a great fall, we can still see some more work happen. If it turns on us, then we'll just have to roll that money over to next year and Okay, double down. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Okay, thank you, Danny. Okay, Colleen, RCMP Statistical Report. Well, it's just
the rate for August. <laughs> Unless there's some questions I can forward back to Mark. Yeah, it's just that. Not for me. Okay. We will move on to finance. The designate new tax sale date. Uh, so just very quickly, uh, earlier in the year you designate 2019 as the year for which you would sell properties for the uh, new taxes. That would mean anything that would be outstanding from basically 2018 and older. Uh, through COVID, it was required by the province of Manitoba that we suspend any action on tax sale activity to at least the end of September. Or I think actually it was the 22nd of September. Um, so with that coming up and going to uh, not be extended any further, we have a resolution on the books here now to actually name a new tax sale date to put that tax sale process back into circulation, whereby we have to meet certain imposed deadlines. Um, so all this means is we're setting a new tax sale date if the province determines that because of COVID that they would still like us to see it suspend, we'll just suspend it. But we need to set a time frame and get a process in place now to move forward. So I'm just asking you, push the date to March now so we can hold this year's tax sale. Okay, no, it makes sense. That's a fair-minded decision. Um, anybody have any comments, any questions? Okay, so we'll move forward with that resolution then. Move by. House on the vote. Second by Councilor Costinger. Whereas, due to the financial impacts that COVID-19 may have on ratepayers, the province of Manitoba directed municipalities to a temporary suspend work on the tax sale process until September 21st, 2020. And whereas, once the temporary suspension is over, the town and Evo will be unable to meet the legislative timelines in order to continue with the tax sale slated for November 3rd, 2020. Therefore, be it resolved that we now set March 3rd, 2021 at 2 p.m. for the holding of the tax sale for the 2019 tax sale proceedings. All in favor? Carry. Okay, we're into the July financial statement. Everybody's had a chance to review that. If there's no questions, no concerns, we'll move forward with that motion. Move by Council Jarrett. Mm -hmm. Second by Council Pendle. Be it resolved that we approve the financial statement for the month ending July 31st, 2020. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we're into the new business. So our first one is our first public hearing, the very application for a bon garage. Uh, did we have any concerns? Did we have any, any more questions about it? Are we all comfortable with moving forward with that? Okay. We will move forward with the with motion moved by Councilor Parrott, seconded by Councilor Kostinchuk. Be resolved that we approve variation application B-02-2020 of Shiva Maharaja to vary the height of the fence in the rear yard of Block 2, Plan 5695 of 139 Main Street West from 6 feet to 8 feet within the CH Commercial Highway Zone to accommodate vehicles towed, stored, impounded, or recovered by RCMP and MPI. All in favor? Period. And our second public hearing, the Jeff Bay, Alexia, Charlie. Uh, everybody was comfortable with that one? I, I actually have some okay. concerns with that. Okay. Um, just not so much that the fact that, that there's a fence built, it's that um, because it doesn't, it doesn't follow code and because us to the council will not have the opportunity to discuss whether we want to give variation to that. So that is my concern on the overall project. Um, so yeah, probably a little bit more. Okay, that's my concern. Yeah, and I don't disagree with you. I mean, Council Fellow and I went and looked at it, and I think when we saw it, we just applied the fact that, you know, everything's not black and white. There's, there's gray areas, right? And we thought in this particular case, you know, it's coming down the middle. It's not like it's a back lane or anything like that. It, it's just going yeah. to, protect his deck. And I understand what you're saying, Councilor yeah. Gerard. Yeah. But um, I think we were comfortable with that decision. Absolutely. Okay. I think we'll probably move forward with that then and get to vote accordingly. So, move by. Councilor Costa Chen. Seconded by Councilor Costa. 
B resolved, that we approve variation application B-03-2020 of Jeff Bay on behalf of Charlie Glessio to vary the height of a fence in the north side yard of block 25 and 26, block A, plan 222, separating 415 Fifth Avenue and 409 Fifth Avenue from a height of 6 feet to 8 feet within the RS residential single unit zone to bring the newly constructed fence into compliance. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Carries. Okay, <clears throat> storefront improvement incentive program. Okay, Councilor Pundle spoke to that. Do we have any questions, any concerns about that? Okay, we'll move forward with that resolution. Moved by Councilor Pundle. Seconded by Councilor Pundle. Be it resolved that we approve the application of the storefront improvement program submitted by Promo Time for exterior renovations, including new signage and lighting, incentive provided at 50% up to an approved amount of $2,576. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we're back into supplemental taxes for 2020, colleague. So this is just an annual thing. If so happen you have anything that is removed from your special you or added to your special role, uh, the branch has the opportunity to provide those uh, either full year additions or partial year additions. They can go back a year or two if you notice from the list that you have there. So these would be things that they weren't able to include on their uh, preliminary and final assessment role before the year would close out. So. Um, you have a net value there of additional completions of $9,199.96. Is there any questions, any comments? I'm assuming I don't have to read every single one of them. No. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, we'll move forward with that motion. Move by. Councilor Kostachuk. Second by. Councilor Jerk. Be it resolved that in accordance with Section 326 of the Municipal Act, Council hereby approve the following supplemental additions and deletions to the 2020 tax roll as received from the assessment branch in the amount of, what was it? $9,499.96. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we're into Fire Prevention Week. Who gets to talk about the fire prevention? Be you call it? Me? This is me? So this is just a proclamation okay. as you all know. Normally fire prevention week there can be activities happening throughout your community and whatnot. Uh, with COVID it's very difficult to have any activities or promote any specific item. Um, it was a decision that we have a proclamation done because we have to be sitting as council in advance of that particular week. And I believe we're going to sponsor each day of that particular week a different thing where you, you know, take a look at booking or you take a look at uh, you know planning for state or your home and everything and I'm not sure which every day will be but uh, keep an eye on uh, the Facebook link and our web page for this information it's uh, very valuable. Okay um, we'll move forward on this motion unless everybody has any comments or any questions. Okay move by. Councilor Pablo second by. I'm going to rival you on your list on this one. Me? Yes. That's a very long resolution. <laughs> Whereas the town of Nipah is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting in Nipah, and where as fires is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas two out of every five homes start fire in the kitchen, with 31% of those fires resulting from unattended cooking, and whereas more than half the reported non-fatal home cooking fire injuries occurred when the victims tried to fight the fire themselves, and whereas children under the age of five face a higher risk of non-fire burns associated with cooking than being burned in a cooking fire, and whereas people or residents should stay in the kitchen when frying food on the stove top, keep a three-foot kid-free zone around cooking areas and keep anything that can catch fire away from the stove tops. And whereas residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half. And whereas Nipua's first responders are dedicated to re reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education, and whereas Nipua residents are responsive 
to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes, and whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme, TM, serve up fire safely in the kitchen, effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and to use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Blake McCutcheon, Mayor of the Town of Nipua, and the Council of the Town of Nipua, do hereby proclaim October 4th to 10, 2020, as Fire Prevention Week, and I urge all residents of Nipua to check their kitchens for fire hazards and use safe cooking practices and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Nipua Fire and Emergency Services. All in favor? You were right. again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, we are on to Councillor Murray Parrott, who wants to be Vice President of our Manitoba Municipality. It's pretty exciting. Do you have any comments on that, Murray? Or? Well, um, it's a good, good association and really works uh, for the municipalities and for the people in Manitoba. And I feel like I do um, an excellent job representing the province, and I do have lots of time to do this. Okay. And of course, Vice President is only one step away from being your president, right? Okay. That's a big step. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you've been on that? Yeah, you've been on Yeah, I've been on AMN for a few years now, and uh, as a district rep for the Western District. And I've seen the importance of maintaining open uh, communication channels with uh, all the different levels of government and keeping the provincial municipalities working together as a team and because we all have similar problems, but our problems are very unique to our own municipality in its own way. And as a group, we can make a lot of positive changes. And I think the government manager actually does take an interest in what they aim at. Oh, yeah, there's a very good leadership with, uh, yeah. between the two. Yep. So when's that going to happen? Uh, is that in November? Okay. At the AMN convention. Okay. And you have any idea how many people are running for vice president? No. No. Okay. Just that uh, our current Cam Blight, he's the vice president, he is uh, running for president as Rob Green is uh, Stepping down at the end of this term. Okay. Okay, perfect. Anybody have any concerns about Murray running for vice president? Okay. I'd like to just say he's been doing an excellent job as a director, representing uh, not only Nipua but our whole region. And you know, I'd be honored to be the one to to be uh, able to push the motion forward. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, with that, then we'll move forward. Moved by Councillor Nadeau and seconded by Councillor Kostachuk. Be it resolved that the Council of Town Upa do hereby nominate Councillor Mary Perry for the position of Vice President for the upcoming 2020 Executive Committee election of Association of Manitoba Municipalities. All in favor? Chair, that is unanimous. <coughs> Okay, I think we are coming to the end of our meeting. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Park Lake, but is there anybody else that wants to have anything else they want to talk about before we get to that? Okay, I just thought maybe summer's coming to an end, and of course July 1st was when we lost our Park Lake, and uh, obviously over the last two months there's been a lot of conversation in the community about uh, what's going to happen, and whether it's going to be fixed, or whether it's going to be replaced, or whether it's going to stay like it is. And I thought maybe, Colleen, you could just bring us up to date on what we've heard from the government so far, and from engineers, and, and stuff like that. So maybe forward. I'll go back just a little sure. bit, yeah. uh, I guess, on July 1st. I think we need to be isolated in Nipua, such that uh, the information that was getting out there that it was a severe hardship was being occurred in the rivers and rap city and then was I think um, the way things were handled here and the fact that what was occurring is a disaster in Nipua, not being specific to where traffic was traveling through as per se, it wasn't maybe as noticeable what we were experiencing here in Nipua. Because the little conversations I had after July 1st, so no matter whether it was 
was uh, you know, the newspapers or the radio stations or, or whatever that called didn't really understand what occurred in Nikwa. So for example, the first set of engineers came out, they called and said, we understand a little bit of water had left Park Lake. And I said, no, it's empty. Um, and we get silence on the end of the phone. They show up, first thing we get out of the truck and uh, did he happen to be there and I think you were there as well. said, oh, you really meant empty? And I said, yeah, I think empty means empty, <laughs> but anyway. So I think all of a sudden people are starting to understand what we were experiencing here. And then more recently we passed a resolution the council did to start lobbying on behalf of what should occur perhaps in the watershed from an overall perspective. When you have an 800 foot <coughs> drop of water coming at the upper end of the watershed, right down from Equa and beyond and heading further east, um, that, that's fairly significant. Uh, so we've since had engineers out again. We've actually toured, we walked the basin of the lake here more recently last week. Uh, from what we've been told, obviously there is going to be a disaster program. We will be getting some more information in the, uh, by email or mail in the coming weeks. So they kind of did what they did is they kind of spec'd out a value of what they felt needed to happen or what the costing might be. And it's, it's just a projection, that's all it is. It's a, a pre-estimate, a pre-inspection report. Um, we looked at all of the sites around Nipua, and if you include the golf course, I think they, they actually made 13 sites, 13 holes out there that need some attention. So uh, Nipua, in totality, would have probably 25 sites now, roughly, uh, the way we were looking at it. So, specific to Park Lake, uh, the site included the weir, it included the where the berm reached on the one point, and then the berm we had to build uh, basically to the east of Walker Avenue. Um, they told us as well that probably looking at the fact that Park Lake was there for since the late 1800s, we would never be able probably to put the burn back in the corner the way it was just using earth. We would have to bring it to modern day standards. He did not say whether it would be mechanical or structural or whatever, but just uh, as our natural operations mentioned, you know, just even if it did go back to some kind of material deposit, it's going to have to be framed in certain ways and likenesses similar to what a lagoon style would have to be done. Uh, a lot of pressure came over that area. I don't know what they mean to alleviate that pressure, what that means to possibly dredging some of what came in with shale and gravel deposits through the water that came through there. We don't know those answers. Uh, we basically, uh, when we get asked here at the office what's going to cost, what, what does it need to be done, we don't have a clue. Um, I'm by far not an engineer and I don't have that the rest of you have any ideas. Denise would be our closest one to be able to tell us what he thinks might have to happen there. It's going to be a long discussion. I think the lobbying has started to help. They're starting to get a bigger picture of what really did occur in Dubois. Others also know the importance of what Park Lake brought um, for serving as a retention pond for water, the water coming from the upper watershed. I'm going to guess that the people to the east of us, whether it's through Arden or Gladstone or as far as Portage, are going to understand that if nothing is done here, uh, and it may stay as we don't know that. There has to be some kind of control device to put in place, whether it be a lake or something different, to defend for everybody else to the east. Um, it's going to be a lengthy process. Uh, so I guess we'll wait out the report that's going to come from uh, Stantec, who is operating on behalf of the University of Message Organization to provide those preliminary inspections and get us that information, and then we'll have to take a look at it and decide what it, is the uh, furthest side to the south of Park Lake important to us? What's the value? What's the opportunities there? Could it be restructured? Could it be repurposed things? What, what is the commitment to put it back the way it is? But uh, I can see, just looking very closely into the near future, the funding is not there in our budget. It's very limited. Um, we have to look at it from a bigger perspective, I think, and understand the value from all aspects, not just from the money point of view, but where does this put us 20 years away, where does it put us 50 years away? Yeah, like I said, when 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 I talk to people in the community, I mean, it, it, they, they have, there's lots of ideas out there. Right? I mean, some people are talking about it just as a wetland, right? Maybe we'll just turn it back in for the geese and the ducks and, and for um, the bird sanctuary and things like that. Other people are really pushing for it to be a wreck area, right, where we could put canoes on it and uh, kayaks and maybe throw some fish in there, and I'm not sure that's possible. I've asked me about that, and maybe you could just quickly talk about how that water works in that, if we could ever get it rebuilt to a lake, how that water flows or doesn't flow. Yeah, as well, eventually, there's so many questions that we have that we just don't have the answers to yet. Um, 
Would I love to see the lake again? Of course I would. Uh, will, I, will it happen next year? No. I think the public needs to embrace that this could be three to five years okay. in realistic time frame. Um, it'll take some council logging, some community logging. It'll definitely allow the voice to eventually get heard here. Um, could it be a freshwater lake? Not a freshwater, but a lake that's moving that wouldn't be algae in it. It could be a lake that could be. I think um, if we deepen it up a little bit there and just clean up some of the sediment, some of the silt, all that stuff, and again, these are conversations with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans that we have to see what's permissible in our end. So, like I said, there's, there's a hundred questions that we have that we just don't even have answers to them yet. Like, do we want to build um, upstream weir structures to capture silt as it comes in so we can avoid heavy silting the lake later on every time there's a spring flood? So we leave the similar to a shale trap. Um, but yeah, my, my initial gut is that we'll have to have any form of a structure to release water, whether it would be a, a giant weir structure of logs, whether it be substantially sized pipe with a valve so that if flood situation came in hand we could release water in a hurry, do a managed flood of our park system and downstream, but very well managed. At least that way we can lessen the blow and then we have that retention time again to help mitigate water flow through. So it's all these calculated risks of determining what's the best route. That's what I'm saying. It's not just a matter of just throw some rocks and some dirt in there and call it a day. Unfortunately the problem and the solution are much bigger. Right. All right. Like, Council Council Chair, we were talking before the meeting, and you said you had lots of people come up to you and say that they want the lake back, right? Isn't that what you've heard in general? Yeah. A lot of people say, you know, what are you doing in the park lake? We'd like to see it be a lake again. I've had a few say, leave it like it is, let, it run, you know, let the river run through, make it a green space, put it into a park. I think maybe what's people don't understand is it's not it's not that easy there's a lot a lot more decision that has to be made and it's not necessarily in our hands like they all say what are you doing as a town you know fill the lake back up well it's not really that easy there's so many other avenues you have to go through environmentally and engineering the whole thing so you know it's good to clarify it's not like next year we're going to have a lake it's it's a long time and it's a lot of process that's we all have to work together and I don't mind the community feedback I like to hear everyone's ideas yeah, it's just that it's not going to happen overnight and we don't have the answers yeah and I think that's we just don't happen I think we need to start getting that that it is going to be mm -hmm. a lengthy process right it's not going to be yeah. one year or two years it could be a piece of yeah. three to five maybe I would call it a win if we could clean up some of the sediment yeah this winter when it's frozen okay and that would be a huge win of the start of the project, but I mean, if we don't get it this winter, we may have to wait, wait next year for it to freeze up. So I think that would be happening during the frozen period. But that would come out of our budget this year, right? That's where the login comes in. Yeah. And see if <laughs> what portion of funding will be allocated. Like, right. Yeah, it's all at a cost, too. Yeah. That's, the other thing. That's there, There's a sub huge cost. I have even set the servers out there to go and draw it and get a topographic idea of how much volume of material has to be removed out of there because then we have to find a place to dispose of that right you said it is valid not valuable but it's we would likely get some nutrient testing done on it to see what is in it to see if it's a, a viable product to put on some some farmland that needs those nutrients yeah um, but again we're, we're stuck to spring and fall right <laughs> those fields are growing in the middle there so we can't yeah. really right spread it in the growing season so Councilor Parrott, you always have an opinion. What are you thinking? <laughs> well, uh, it was a too great of a risk for safety to fill it in at the time of the flood. The decision was made to not fill it in. We've already um, sent out um, letters to the different levels of government. Uh, indicating that this is a good uh, water reserve to protect the downstream municipalities. Um, I've talked with uh, Campbell Life and Portage, uh, who's 
with AMM, and he was quite interested in receiving the information, uh, realizing that the White Wood River goes through his municipalities. Um, with so many of our streams feeding into it, um, for as a um, flood issue for Nipwa, currently it's okay the way it is, although it could uh, slow a bit of flooding down that river bend perhaps, but as a flood issue for Nipwa, um, we would need the downstream municipalities to uh, law before us to right. get provincial and federal funding to bring it up. As a recreational entity, it is a draw, and the one thing that the residents will probably notice this year is that they can sleep at night right now because the geese aren't there. But uh, as it was mentioned you know, previously by Council Gerard that this is a residential recreational issue for the town as well. So it would be nice if we could fill in the gap. Right. Uh, it would be nice if we could put in the valve. Yeah, I like that idea too. Yeah. And it would be nice if we could convince the government that that's all we need to do and then it could be done easily. I know. And that could be a challenge. Yeah. Also, Pablo, since Park Lake, some of it ended up in your basement, what's your opinion? <laughs> No, it's it's the community loves Park Lake. Yeah. I know it, it has so much value to our community. Uh, Bird Sanctuary has lots of people that, that like to go out in that area. Uh, the fall, the springtime, when we see all the birds, I'm a person that enjoys the noise of the birds out there. Just seeing them all out there. Uh, it, it's just such a great area to go take a walk around and, and see. Uh, but I know in order to be able to restore it back to the way it was, it's going to have to be done properly. And, yeah. and I know regulations have certainly changed over the past hundred years. And in order for, for those walls to be rebuilt, it's, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of planning, and unfortunately, probably a lot of money. But you're right. I think if it wasn't there, our end of town would just change dramatically, right? If it wasn't there. Councilor Doe, what do you think? Making residents purchase property around there just to have access to that also. Right. Uh, you know, I'm the type of guy, I like to get things done pretty quickly. So to hear that it's going to take so long, it's something you learn. And I think it's something you have to expect a large project like this. And we've seen it with other projects in town where they take a little while, but in the end it's worth it. So uh, I think talking with my fellow councillors here, we're all in favour of some sort of restoration of Park Lake in some form. Uh, definitely to make it better than what it was, there's some different options we have depending on how much we want to put into it. And uh, I'm definitely curious on what type of support we can get from other eight outside agencies, whether it's the province or... But, uh, you know, just last week there was an announcement from the provincial government for, I think it's Fort Wade Live. Uh, they got enough money put into an account to have an endowment fund. Where they get you know four to six hundred thousand a year interest made from their money, so it's going to help fund that. So if we can somehow look to to the future to build something that can be self sufficient, that can really take the burden off of Nikwa in the long term. Council Gerard, you want to bring it home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know Park Lake is one of those things. You know what's interesting when people look at. Um, there's a vast majority of the population surrounding this area that didn't even know Park Lake existed. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting that July 1st, that little 40 acre pocket became a very topical area for uh, area for the whole region. And uh, you know, when you take an area that basically is almost at the head of the White Mud River where you see Stony Creek, I mean, it's at a critical place where it occurs in the watershed. And, uh, you know, someone who interacts with our agricultural producers every day, who continue to make land improvements and things like that, you know, in terms of water management, um, I think this is one of those areas where this will contribute to water management within our watershed. Myself, I've spent 
countless years as a supporter of uh, Docs Unlimited. And uh, I see conservation of, of, of waterways like this. I don't see it if, the, if there's not a canoe on it, if there's not a you know, boat on it or something like that, that it's, it's got zero value. Uh, I mean, it has a huge amount of value. Well, we see and what it can do to help keep phos phosphate loads out of, of Lake Manitoba. Um, we see, you know, it, it's interesting this summer, you know, after that day, how quiet it's become around that. It's, it's now a dead region in the community. And it is quite sad. Like, you know, it, it used to be you go out there and you, you see the red wing blackbirds. Um, the kids went and they saw the turtles. That's gone. And it, it's, it's like a big scar on the south end of our community now. I know there's countless people. Um, they're reaching out to me, trying to contact people whomever they can to reach out to whatever organization they can to get engaged in that. And I think we'll do, we will do our community a great disservice if we don't get them involved sooner rather than later in the restoration of our public. And whether it be an advocacy group, uh, you know, those who might be able to lend expertise or, or contacts to whom we can help in our lobbying effort. I mean, let, let's face it, uh, us as a council, week in, week out, we're made to look really good by our, our administration staff. They do so much work in the background. Is this another project that we can just dump solely at their feet? Because when we talk lobbying, let's be honest, it's not us who's in there day in, day out doing the lobbying. We're asking our administrative staff. Yep. While in the process, we're also asking our administrative staff to, you know, where's our Where's your heater for the pavement? To, you know, and uh, and uh, the, the, the list of projects is many on them. And so I think the sooner we can broaden our reach and get our community involved, I think it would be a huge benefit. Uh, I don't want to rest until I see water back in that, in, in, in back in Park Lake. I know it's not going to be easy. And I know I'm prepared to push that rope to get, get it up that hill and whatever we have to do to put water back there. And, and restore that area of our community. It's, I think it's just too important. Can I put a dollar sign on what the value is to the town? I can't. I mean, it'd be nice to put just a, it, it'd be nice to look at debits and credits and that's solely what it is. That's not what put it there. Um, that's not what's done a lot of things that made me cooperate. So I think we've got to get involved sooner rather than later on that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly obvious. We all agree that Park Lake is something of value to our town. We very much would like to put it back into place, but obviously we've also been told that it's going to take months, years of time, and we don't know numbers yet, right? We don't know how much money. So, I mean, I think that, uh, it's just good that we can, you know, tell the community that, you know, we are engaged, and our, as Daryl says, our administration is definitely engaged, and, uh, I mean, we'll just move forward and, uh, Continue to advocate for uh, for everything we can. Any last comments? Okay. Anything else you guys want to discuss before the end of the meeting, or was Park like it? Just one yeah, reminder. <laughs> uh, and uh, I know Councillor uh, Pudlow mentioned this already. Lots of users out at the at the bike park right now, and you know. To, to really enhance the safety and the enjoyment, you know, we know we've got our kids out there and they want to jump and everything like that. What an excellent opportunity to get trained by a proper coach. Not only can they make the park more fun, but they can make it more safe as well. Just to limit that, though, Daryl, we are looking at today 12, uh, 12, 12 and over. We are trying to get the option of 12 and under yes. as well at a later date. Okay. It is on Facebook. There is a few spots left. It's just about full. So if you've got any interest, I really urge you getting on the phone or getting a hold of town, getting a, getting yeah, someone involved right now, registered right away. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, I guess we'll move to adjournment. Move by. Councilor Costa, second by Councilor Pudlow. Thank you.
Day result of council, town meeting for now to adjourn this regular meeting of council at 8 p.m. All in favor? Sure.